The holidays are around the corner, which can be a dreaded time for those of us with long COVID. We know that we may soon have to defend ourselves and the things that we do to our friends and family members because of long COVID. Setting boundaries is really important, even with family because if we don't protect our health, then who will? I wanna share with you a little bit of an example from last year in the UK. Um, many of you who are in the UK are very familiar with the ongoing rail strikes, and there was one last Christmas right on the Christmas holiday. I knew I didn't wanna be stuck at my parents' house for multiple days at a time by myself. My brother and sister were popping by, but for brief periods, and if they left early, I wanted to make sure that I could leave too. I'm definitely someone who likes my alone time. Too much time with family can be overwhelming for me. I went ahead months in advance um, and made a reservation for a rental car so that I would have the freedom of arriving when I wanted to and leaving when I wanted to. To keep in mind when you are making plans for the holidays this year, think about what your energy envelope is and make a plan ahead of time and stick to that plan. We don't want to be deciding in the moment based on how we're feeling. That's a surefire way to wind up with post-exertion malaise. And you don't have to explain to your family why you're doing what you're doing. That isn't our responsibility to explain our illness to other people. If somebody needs an explanation, let somebody else explain what is going on. When we get the courage to draw a boundary for the first time, especially after years of people pleasing, others may be surprised by this and it is very likely that they will act out. For example, they may raise their voice, they may call us names, they may just be surprised and kind of pressure us, oh, but no, but are you sure you, and tell us what they want from us. It's important to keep in mind that this is very normal. When we draw a boundary, thinking of that two-year-old kid who wants an ice cream or candy, it's the exact same principle. If you give in and you give the kid the ice cream every time they throw a tantrum, they're gonna learn that that type of behavior gets them a nice reward. If you hold the boundary, they will act out to begin with, but very quickly the tantrums will stop and they will learn that if mom says no, it's a no. It's the same with adults. We work on the same principles psychologically. We have to hold our new boundaries and then we also have to remember that we are not responsible for other people's emotions. It's really important for our long COVID recovery that we put our nervous systems first, and that is going to require boundaries. I know that that may feel alien. I had a client the other day tell me she didn't want to be demanding when setting boundaries, and I think we all have our own version of that. We are used to making other people happy, and it can feel uncomfortable for us to say what we need. Most of us with long COVID have a trauma history and it's very common for people with trauma histories to become people pleasers. It can be hard to learn to have boundaries. Most of us in our long COVID recovery hit a point where we realize that if we don't start saying no, we'll be in that same state of overwhelm forever. That is just not an option. This is me giving you permission this holiday season to put yourself first. It is absolutely critical for your health and for your recovery. And something interesting, which I know is really getting into cultural differences, but certainly something to keep in mind. Contrary to popular belief, we do not have to give a reason for setting boundaries. Something that I have learned in the US, maybe it's a New York culture thing, um, but the phrase, that doesn't work for me is used very commonly. And that is all you have to say. Thank you so much for the invite. I really appreciate it. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it. And that's it. Even if on the day you really wanted to go and something has happened and you just don't have the strength, it is perfectly fine an hour before to not go. Because in our case, the choice of pushing on through is not going to be a viable option. 
we will pay for that weeks and months later and I don't want that for you. You are allowed to do what's best for you. You are not responsible for how other people react to your boundary. You are responsible for your own long COVID recovery. Knowing how to set boundaries, especially in social situations, can be difficult. If you are unsure, I particularly like uh, Michelle Elman's The Joy of Being Selfish. She is a British life coach. She talks a lot about boundaries and in that book, she goes through specific scenarios and gives instructions on what to say and how to respond. So if you're looking for a little bit more input, I highly recommend that. It is difficult to set boundaries and keep them in place, especially around the holiday season, especially in some cultures that are very family focused and there's a huge group emphasis and they may not let you breathe until you give a specific reason for your actions. You must remember, as an adult, we are responsible for our own emotions, which means that you are not responsible for other people's emotions. That's on them. If you're uncomfortable or overwhelmed, you are allowed to do what's best for you and leave with no explanation. Putting yourself first this holiday season is going to be critical for what happens in 2024. I hope these tips are helpful for you. Uh, in my Facebook group, we have regular Boundary Win Friday posts in which we encourage all our members to showcase the boundaries that they have set that week. If you want to join in and be a part of that, I'm going to put the link for my Facebook group below. I encourage you to put yourself first this week. I hope it's a tolerable one and I'll see you soon.